So, welcome back to Peter Tries. Peter Bracken here. So, I met some small lad uh, <laughs> out, uh, out in the hallway here in Cork Jail. I'm at the um, Free Now EV Roadshow. So, basically, a roadshow all about um, helping taxi drivers to get into electric vehicles uh, to lower local air pollution and to save an absolute ball of money. And as I was knocking around, I saw a big old yoke. Uh, there and he looked like a Fogarty <laughs> and it is it's Dennis how are you Dennis I'm looking good how are you <laughs> good to see you good good what are you doing here well would you believe I started with Free Now two weeks ago ah uh, yeah I was landing in a job here so um I'm now regional development manager for them down here in the south of Ireland. So having someone, the big thing for us was having someone on the ground here in Cork as we as we grow the business here and as we grow the the fleet of electric vehicles and and just yeah. be the support for the drivers. Um, so that's that, that's mainly, and, I, and we, I'll obviously cover across Limerick and um, up yeah. up to Galway as well. So um, good man. So you're, yeah. so you're 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 kind of learning still, like you're only two weeks in the job. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So still kind of getting to terms of. Of the industry, you know what I mean, yeah. and uh, and obviously the, the 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 needs of the drivers and obviously the passengers, you know what yeah. I mean. So um, so yeah, still learning, but uh, and today was great. So just to get to meet a lot of the drivers and and then what's available for them and stuff, you know what I mean. Yeah. So uh, yeah, yeah, and, and people that might know uh, rugby, um, Dennis played for Munster for <laughs> nine seasons. Um, I left. Uh, I. I Played with Munster for two seasons, then I left to Connacht, and uh, Dennis came in. So it might have been the fact that I left that he came along. You didn't, <laughs> <laughs> but hopefully yeah, not. No, hopefully no, not no, that no, too no. bad. Well, I mean, <laughs> you would have been there three years earlier, yeah. only for I was there. <laughs> <laughs> I said, yeah, no, I'm not. A, I'm not that bad of a fella. But uh, yeah. yeah. So and then you played in France for a while. Yes. Um, yeah. yeah. I oh, played out there for four years. So I did nine years in Munster. Uh, and then I went, I left in 2011, 2012 season and I played out in France. I went out to Jeremy Davison actually out in Oriac for the first year. And then I did two years in Agen and then I did a year. Well, I didn't really play much down in uh, Aix-en-Provence. They were in the Pro D2 at the time, mm. but I had to retire from a, a shoulder injury. And then I did two years of coaching out there in their academy. And I kind of, I, coaching wasn't for me. Okay. Um, so because it was quite full on it was seven days a week and we just had small kids and stuff so we said look let's no, let's no. return home return to what you know so yeah. uh, and that's we've made that so I've been home now nearly four years are you? so yeah I'm at home now four years so uh, which is which is great it's it's great to be back you know what I mean and and like I said just getting back in to the people you know you know yeah, the, yeah. the network so and you got a real job for yourself. I did. I did. It was some fucking change. I tell you that much. I avoided that. <laughs> I still avoid it. Yeah. I'm on YouTube now. I'm a YouTuber. Oh, Jesus Christ! Look. That's not very. Oh, that's not a very popular one. I'm learning nothing out of it. But uh, I know. Oh, no. This is going to. This is going to take off. This one is. I tell you now. Yeah. yeah. This one will take off. We start scrummaging yeah. in about twenty minutes. We get a hundred thousand subscribers straight away. Yeah. I know. Oh. That's all right. No, I'm a full-time carer at the moment myself and I'm just doing this for a hobby just Brilliant. get yeah no I'm trying to link sport and the environment and uh, mm. you know I love the all electric cars I just think they're brilliant mm. and um yeah, the, the guys, Fiona, just asked me, could I come down and take a look around here mm. uh, today? And it's really brilliant because the taxi drivers, all I knew is the taxi drivers can save a ball of money by going yeah. electric. Can yeah. you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, and, and do, do you know what? Would you believe I'm only, I only got to know that only last in the last couple of days since I started right. is that there's a there's so there's huge grants out there from the government I think the government alone have put 15 million to help them change because it's obviously they're the people on the ground they're moving yeah. so many people from companies from hospitals from yeah. wherever wherever like you know what I mean so they're on they're they're always on the go so it's it's to drive that to them to, to be electric and it's obviously better for the environment better for that for their pocket but also they're helping them to make that change you know what I mean and and to be fair Free Now itself has also invested mm. 6 million 6 million 6 million in 2021 to help them to make the change that they put that 6 million towards getting home chargers in place for everyone that is is make it successfully make the change and also they'll, they'll they, there's an additional 600 euros through the Free Now EV match scheme to ensure the drivers can actually obtain that that home charging unit you know what okay. I mean because can be expensive you know yeah. I think that's the biggest worry when people start talking about yeah. 
get an electric car and stuff and you know and the setup and everything you know what I mean like it's like even for myself when I looked at it trying to because I don't have the infrastructure at the moment okay. there was a lot of things tied onto it so all those funds are in place to actually help that change you know what I mean and you know like that can be like a charger can be in around five six hundred euros they can go up smart chargers a little mm. bit more expensive I find myself the smart chargers are worth every penny because okay. uh, you you can charge like in the normal I suppose dumb charger it just when you plug it in it charges it doesn't take into account how much the electricity is when you're charging all like that the smart chargers mm -hmm. you can plug in seven o'clock in the evening it might start charging until two o'clock in the morning okay when the electricity is really cheap so you're yes. you're getting the less electricity you want to the night mode exactly exactly okay. and it, it, it you save that way so yeah. you know most people are spending at least 50 euros uh, average 50 euros and with petrol prices now and these are you know 50 60 70 80 a week mm -hmm. that, that can go down to 10 euros a week yeah. by going electric so you know like that difference in price generally speaking that 10 percent the electric mm -hmm. car can cost initially is wiped you know within a year 18 months generally and then it's cheaper from then on so right. you know and i i got into them because i just drove on for the first time um about four years ago and i just thought they were amazing yeah. um and you know so comfortable to drive and all that and then um yeah, I because uh, you went around the country, didn't you? I did. Yeah, and how, like because that's that's the <laughs> yeah. other thing that we come across is that. Okay. Did you ever fear of kind of going? No. Jesus, if I get caught here now in Clamel no. or in Cashel, where am I going to charge the bloody thing? No, and I'm not the most organised fella in the world, right? You know, uh but like you, you, you begin to know where all the chargers are, kind of in the country, and you take a quick look on the app on your phone mm. or the app in, on, on the car where the nearest chargers. Um, you get to know the car, like so. If your car is down marked down oh it's 450 kilometer range uh but it's winter that you're probably thinking right at 400 kilometers in in this car that's four or five six hours of driving like even in country roads and different things around mm. ireland so so i drove to 36 uh, 32 counties of ireland northern ireland in 21 hour and a half hours so under 24 hours mm -hmm. and i didn't get stuck so i had a general idea where i was going to charge because i knew i'd get four or five hours of driving in right i'd have to charge for an hour but you know, I still eat a bit. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. you know, I haven't, I'm yeah. not fading away. <laughs> Makes the two of us. Just we would find up there. Find up there. Oh, what? Oh, fucking, I tell you, we lock it up. Like, I tell you, I'm going to Right, so <laughs> cheap. Yeah. Plenty of vets games going on. <laughs> <laughs> I've played in a vets game down in Cashel. Did you? A good few years ago. Yeah. Um, it was a charity one. John Connor. Oh, oh yeah, 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 a few yeah. years ago, yeah, right. great crack it was. Um, yeah, a few of the leanies and the whole lot. Oh, the yeah. big dogs were all out yeah. that day, you know. They were, yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Every now and again, I get an itch to go back onto the field. Yeah. I want to be just knocked around yeah. the place or get a belt of something. You know what I mean? But then again, I'm like, after then, I'm like, right, I need to just sit down now for a year. I find that lasts for a good five minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then kind of go. And then you're gone. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> but always happens in the front row. Yeah. Right, there's lads like in real real owl and haven't scrummaged in years. Right. So a mad keen, mad yeah, keen. Yeah, yeah. And it's all gentlemen's like <laughs> lads, we take it easy. Yeah. Of course. First scrum. Engage. Boom. <laughs> and lads are pushing well, like yeah. mad or whatever. <laughs> and next <laughs> next thing the shoulders are in bits and yeah. all that and yeah. the lads say, Right, next one we'll go a proper gentleman and we'll just lie in and <laughs> take her hand, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and like you know, one time I'd be take with myself if I missed a tackle. I oh, know, yeah, yeah. Sure now? No. Drive on. You <laughs> can go. Let him off. Yeah. yeah. Corridor to your left. No bother. Go on away. Drive on. Yeah. I'm no interest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what, what uh, got me on to that? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It was just the run about the cars and the rugby yeah. and, and the whole lot. But, but driving around the country, yes. yeah. Yeah, I don't find... Um, like there's way more charges than it was. Like there's a lot of bad mm. stories you hear. But most of them are like from five, six, seven, eight years ago where the infrastructure wasn't mm. good enough. It's getting better all the time. Mm -hmm. And I think the likes of some of the petrol stations are getting keen now on putting in chargers because um, if a customer comes in, they're charging for maybe a half an hour, then go buy a coffee, take it handy, take, mm -hmm. do a few phone calls, whatever, mm -hmm. spend a few quid at it. Whereas petrol or diesel, in, out, five minute job, you're yeah, gone. Yeah, yeah. So some of them like Circle K are very proactive 
in trying to get into infrastructure. So I think they'll be the first to really take okay. off and that'll make a big difference because yeah. when people drive in with a petrol diesel car, they'll see more and more car electric cars charging. Yeah. The likes of Maxwell are them or the other way around. Oh, it's too expensive, it's too much yeah, of cost. Yeah. Who's going to do the the infrastructure so they might pull out altogether. I don't know what they're going to do because okay. if they don't, if they don't change, move with it, they're yeah. left behind. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So we'll, we'll see what way that goes. But yes, yeah. am I right? There's not huge money in petrol or diesel for them. No, there? no, there isn't. No, they make money out of you going in and buying a, a, coffee. a, a coffee and a donut and maybe an old yeah. jam. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> jam Jesus, tart or yeah. whatever, you know, so, yeah. or, or a bit of food or whatever you do. Mm. So I find that brilliant because, like, a, a trip around the country. Like I, I drove to every GA club in Offaly uh, one day. Another day, I drove out to every cl GA club in Mayo. Now that took a long time. Mayo is a big county, yeah, yeah. but I didn't get stuck. I didn't get stuck. Hey. Now it was tight because there was no charger out in Belmullet and there was no charger in Ackle. And that has yes. to change because they're a big death destination. Yeah, do you know where I was? I was in Lewisburg. Holidays. Where are you? I was where about you? two or three weeks oh, ago. Oh, no way. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Now, there's chargers in Westport. Yeah. So, so when the day you get an electric car and the day you're going to Lewisburg, before you even leave, what you, what you will do, what people do is they just check, right, where's the nearest charger? Oh, Westport. Oh, that's grand. I'm going out to Lewisburg. Right, I'm driving from Limerick. Right, I'll go up to Lewisburg. But you know what? I'll charge, I'll charge when I get to Westport. Yeah. Then I'll go out to Lewisburg for a day or two, drive around. Yeah. I won't need to charge. Yeah. If I'm staying in a and b with a charger, great. If they don't have a charger, there's a granny plug in there. It can just charge into the normal socket. Now, okay. it takes ages and it won't give you a whole lot. But, you know, mm -hmm. overnight, it might give you another 20, 30 percent. Right. Then you're heading back to Limerick, charging Westport. Jobs your own. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, or in Castlebar or wherever. So yeah. it, what I found is um, until I started driving electric, I didn't really see. Yeah, uh, electric car charge. As soon as you start driving, you see them everywhere. Yeah, and there's more and more. And mm. another problem that used to be a thing, four or five years ago, there was the generation one chargers. They weren't great. Mm. Half the time they were broken. Right. But now they're much better. Okay. They're not much better. They're working. Yeah. You know, even if there's a bit of a problem, they'll be able to fix it online. Get you going. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. So there's yeah. not the. Um, we just need more and more of them. And yeah. And along the short of it, ninety five percent of journeys are done. Or, or, or 95% of the charging is done at home anyway. Right. So yes. you, you charge at home. So it's only the odd journey that I would need to charge in public. And right. so far, I, I've, I've been grand and it, it's getting better all the time. Okay. You know, so that grant that you guys in free now are giving to the taxi drivers, that'd yes. be brilliant. Yeah. Because they'll be doing most of the charging yeah. at home. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, and also in the, was it, we've seen it there and I've uh, again ju just seen more and more of it. Um, the longer I've been here, is that in 2021, they they now allow you on the app to get an electric vehicle to collect you. So yes, did yes. Did you see that? I'm actually going to do that now when I leave. Oh, and now they've seen an over 50% uptake on it of people actually requesting an electric vehicle. So every second up. person that goes on the app wants... So they, well, they've got it from over 2021, they've seen it, I think it was a 50, 50 something percent without trouble the whole year. Really? Of, a, of an uptake from the, the previous oh, really? year when it was in Dublin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I get you. Yeah, yeah. So, um... So it's just pretty, now I'm more conscious, but every now and then you're, you're there kind of going, oh, sure, Jesus, I'll, I'll just get an electric, electric one, one, sure, one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, but why not? Oh, like? Why not? Like, yeah, yeah exactly. And I'd be big so, about that. Like, look, I'm, I'd be probably a bit extreme, but say I went on free now and there was a taxi two minutes away and it wasn't much of a rush and then there was an electric taxi 10 minutes away. I would wait 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah. But a lot of people wouldn't, and yeah. they could be in a hurry, this, that, and the other. Mm. But there might be one there four minutes away. Mm hmm. It's electric. Yeah. Two minutes, petrol diesel, four minutes electric. Right, I'll go with that. Yeah. Or yeah. even, it's not a bad way for someone who's only ever driven petrol or diesel to take the electric ta ta taxi. Yeah. See what it's like. That's you know, it. talk to the driver. Yeah, and that's that's what I started doing and it was for, for that exact oh, really? reason. Yeah. I kind of went, geez, I'd love to, I want to pick their brain and see how they're getting on. Do you know what I mean? Because okay. if, I, if I want to go to electric, because... You know, we, I'd love to go to electric, but infrastructure isn't there at my where I live now at the moment. Mm. But mm. I'd you know just to get their idea of what they think of it and everything. Mm. You know what I mean? Because who are really big in it now is companies, yeah. businesses. They're yeah. like if they're driving green, mm. they can't be sending out their clients no. to say right, we'll get this car, this car. They have now the option. They want to reduce their carbon footprint, and that's the that's the other side of the business yeah. where yeah. we now kind of we can report back to the business and say. 
your services would because you went electric you get electric taxis for your clients or your your employees okay you've you know you've saved however much uh on the car you know on Tons the car and, and all that kind of stuff oh. throughout the whole year and obviously you know money and that you know? saves money so, because exactly. carbon tax will become a Correct. big thing and it'll yeah. only go up yeah you know um, so yeah so yeah actually. so that's yeah. that's the other side of it yeah yeah so which is all, and every, do you know what Everything they seem to be doing is all positive. Mm, Do you know okay, what I mean? Right. It's all towards that. It's all towards the greener, and it's and it's where everybody is moving. You know. <laughs> Just, you're not doing too bad for the last sort of year, week and a half. Year, well, you know. I came last Thursday, last Wednesday. That's only it's, it's only four. nearly a week. Yeah, yeah. Ah, here, sure. Yeah. In the job so stop with days. those questions, right. though. Right, 2030. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's 2030 as far as I know. Oh, yeah. Easier yeah. one. How did you enjoy? Playing for Monster. Oh, I loved it. Yeah. Um, do you know it was? Uh, I think that's it's. You know when I, you know when I reflected when I finished. You know when you're playing in it at the time, you don't yeah. really kind of take stock of how yeah. the, the magnitude of it. When you retired and and then having gone to somewhere else, you ne it never felt the same. Do you know what I mean? In your home, your right. hometown, or your home club, it, you know it. Ne it never mattered. Like it always mattered playing for Munster, but when you went to France or something, it never mattered as much. Do you know what I mean? Like in the back of your in the back of your mind, not not saying that it, I didn't go a hundred percent or hundred and ten percent, yeah, yeah, but it meant more. Yeah, do you know what I mean? To play in your home in your home club, and um, do you know it hurt more when you lost, hurt more when you didn't play as well as you should have, because you're playing with your mates, and mm. I, and I would presume it's like that in every club in, in Ireland you know mm. in, in the four oh, provinces yeah. you know yeah. what I mean like that yeah. it's that's what you grew up wanting to do so uh, and that's why when I went away and came back it kind of I was able to reflect on that and and always look back fondly to say jeepers it was amazing to play with you know yeah. your club and I was so so lucky to be involved in such great great times and can you pick a match or an occasion now I know I'm putting you under pressure I didn't uh, set you up like we didn't even talk beforehand like you know any of these questions so. I know the 2030 one yeah, right. yeah. no I know no, yeah no. so that's it. yeah yeah yeah. there's no rehearsal no, here no. go on can you give me a, just a off the top of your head a match or an occasion or a behind behind the scenes um, thing that you could talk about Um, I suppose look I, I was very lucky to be involved in that day, even though I didn't get on the pitch for 2006 when we won the Heineken oh, Cup for the nice, first year. Nice. But that was lovely to be involved nice. in. But what was really nice, mm. even though it was a it was a it was a really bad day for us uh, for Munster at the time, was I came on and played against John in the Heineken Cup semi final in Crow Park oh. and my mother in the stands. Oh. Do you know what I mean? And he yes. came on as a hooker, I came on as a hooker, oh. and we scrummaged <laughs> yeah, we scrummaged against each other. And it was just a lovely moment because yes. it just, yeah, it, you know, it was just a really nice moment for us. Oh. You know, we would have played against each other in in kind of Magners League Digi. games or Pro 12 okay. games when he was okay. in Leinster. Yeah. Um, but that was just, it was just the whole occasion because it was in Crow Park. It was Leinster versus Munster and it was just yeah. a lovely moment that oh, we got right. onto the pitch and yeah. And come here, so, who won the hit? I did. Oh, I good man. <laughs> No, John. Dennis won the hit. None yeah, of your... Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, the, I, yeah. I had the link to him, you know yeah. what I mean? So I got in there earlier. You Get know the shoulder in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Who was beside you? Who so, were the boys um, be beside so you? So I had, Mar I had Marcus and oh, Hayes man. beside you. Oh, yeah, just yeah, Marcus yeah, V yeah. getting in <laughs> underneath, lads, and Hayes just pulling through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, had an armchair. Oh, yeah, armchair. I know. Boys like, looking after you. Safe as houses. Yeah, who was behind you? Um, Paulie and Donners were ah, still on the sure. pitch. Standard. Yeah, yeah, Standard. yeah, yeah. So, um, ah, yeah. So they were great. They, they, yeah. Those days now always kind of stand out to me because you don't ever go. You know, it was such a unique moment, yeah. I suppose, for us as as a family and and as John was a hooker as well. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it was just. The two of us going into that scrum was nice. Ah, you brilliant, know, brilliant. Know. And I do, I remember the 2006, I, I think I might mention that on another video, but 2006, but it's Millennium, uh, Millennium Stadium, uh, John Hayes locked out the scrum, Stringer went around the corner, yes, scoring yeah, the yeah, corner. Yeah. And I was, uh, I was watching that game and, I was over Joe, uh, Joe Ward's place. He was sub hooker yeah. with hooker uh, with uh, Wass at the time, and we kind of both looked at each other and we said, "Jesus, do you know what? Let's be there next year." 
Yeah. Like, let's yeah. be there next year. And we did. Yeah. We did, because, like, Munster and Wasp were pretty yeah. much the two top yeah, teams yeah, yeah, yeah. at the time. And so, you know, Wasp won in 2005. Was. I was at the, was that the, the year they beat Munster and Lenz on Road yeah, 2005 I was yeah. at that game yeah yeah yeah. that yeah. was the semi-final was stands. yeah no I actually I came I came 2005 but um, I came in the like July mm. so that game so Munster I was with Connacht we actually the, the day of that Munster game in Munster was in Lansdowne Road and Trevor Leota. Yes, Leota remember, yeah, scored yeah, the try yeah. in the corner and yeah. won it for Wasp. Yeah. I, we were actually playing that morning. I was playing for Connacht right. that morning. It was a half one kickoff against Harlequins. Well. And by all accounts, it, it, was, it was shown, the second half of that game was shown on uh, on the screen in Aviva before your match kicked off. And yeah. by all accounts, people were all shouting for us yeah. for both yeah, teams yeah, yeah, yeah. because the West supporters didn't want fucking Harlequins to win in. and the Ulster lads wanted yeah. us to win you know yeah. so yeah. it's funny uh, yeah so he went on I said you know what it'd be great to be in that the following year and and we did you know did, but yeah. it, you know the, that wasn't down to the two of us but you no, know but still like isn't it aren't <laughs> the they just great it's nice yeah. to look back on those moments yeah. you know what I mean like yeah yeah so. and that wasn't even on the pitch like you know as yeah. in you can look back at stuff that happen off the pitch and you've just as you've just as an important role and you know yeah, what I mean like yeah. you do you play a part in it you know what I mean even mm -hmm. though at the time it's kind of hard to see it but yeah. you know what I mean it's uh, you do you just do you know what I mean yeah. so, and, and and the French yeah we <laughs> Come on, are you, are you going? Are you going to come out now, in French? Are you going to ask me something in French? No, 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 no. I'll do it. Now. <laughs> I went over to France, 